Okay, it's on, just on 10 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm Susan Hall, the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning, and um, it's been my pleasure to be coordinating with the folks from instructional, uh, from, in, uh, uh, from the technology services uh, on a whole series of workshops on getting started with Canvas. So today we're gonna have Adela Gott and Terry Peek who have forgotten more than I will ever know about technology. Uh, and they're gonna be walking us through uh, primarily a profile and the dashboard. And uh, Adela is gonna get us started. Adela, I'm turning it over to you. All righty, I am going to share my screen. So here is um, Cardinal Apps, and when you click on the canva uh, Canvas tile, the first place you land is the dashboard, and that's what I'm going to be talking about this morning. Um, the dashboard is, um, it's kind of like this page, if you remember from our old friend Blackboard. Um, it's got a list of it's divided into uh, published courses. So these uh, tiles represent the courses that you are in as an instructor or a student that are published. And then there's another section of unpublished courses. So these are uh, sandboxes and test courses in progress that we may or may not ever publish. Um, over here on the on the right side is your to-do list, and this is going to populate with um, assignments for many courses that you're teaching or taking. Um, there's a, uh, you can go to your calendar. There's also, very, I would really like to point this out, there's a button called Start a New Course. When you click that, it will create a new course that's like a sandbox. It's not an official course. It's not going to be in Banner. But it will be a new blank course. If you need another sandbox, you can skip the step of emailing me to set up a stand, uh, sandbox for you. So, and uh, as, the, as the year wears on, you may need several more sandboxes um, to start working on, on uh, as, as the 2020 courses get populated, then you may want more sandboxes to start working on your 20, the courses you'll teach in Canvas in 2021. Um, view grades, that's, you know, just what it says it is. It's very important to students uh, more so than, than an instructor. But this is a really important page. And there's one thing that you're going to do on this page, probably at the beginning of the semester, that you're going to forget by the next semester. Um, you can see there are 13 courses on this page, are in my published courses. Um, as the years go on, you will have every course you've ever taught in here. And it's going to look something like, uh, this course list in the course tab in Blackboard is just going to go on and on and on with every course you've ever had. So the way you can tidy this up is to click on this other tile that's just called Courses. And um, this gives you a list of everything that's on your dashboard right now, but at the very bottom, very important, is a link called All Courses. And this, this is uh, every course you've ever, you'll ever teach or you're in the process of teaching. But you can make it a favorite, which means if you uncheck, if you unstar, everything with a star is a favorite, so it's going to show up on your dashboard. If you uncheck the favorited star, it's going to remove that course from your dashboard. So when I go, now there are only eight. And this will be very handy for, um, for uh, just, if you only teach four or five courses, then you just have those courses. If you're teaching something 
that you uh, refer back to a previous semester um, frequently, you can favorite that previous semester and it'll show up uh, right here, right where you want it. So it's just a way of keeping your, uh, your list of courses tidy and making the ones that are showing handy to what you're using during that semester. Now, with that said, um, if you, when the next semester starts, none of those new courses that come in are favorited, so they're not going to show up. And this was something I learned recently when I had faculty uh, uh, emailing me in January saying, my courses aren't, my courses for the spring aren't there. And we found out that what happened was since they were not favorited, they were not showing up in this window. But we went in, when we went into all courses, of course, the, the new courses were there and they just needed to be, uh, to have their star activated. So that's something that um, if you do it in June, by August, you might forget and you'll panic when you don't see your new courses there. Um, so um, that's that was something that uh, that I learned recently. Susan and I were just talking about how much how long it takes to become competent. Well, <laughs> um, depending on your def definition of competent, it might take forever. <clears throat> um, so this is the dashboard. Um, it's um, you know the face of your uh, of your. Uh, Canvas. There are some other things you can do on your dashboard. You'll notice that um, these boxes are very colorful. Each course has this uh, three button snowman in the top right corner. If you click on it, you can change the, uh, it'll put a color overlay on your, on your, on the little tile there. So if you apply didn't do anything. So if you apply um, that color overlay, it changes uh, the color of your There we go. So it'll change. So if, for instance, you have, you like to have this semester and last semester or spring this year and spring last year showing, uh, just to make it, uh, to give you a visual clue, you can make all of the current semester courses have a pink overlay and all of last year's courses have a, a purple overlay. And that's, we'll just give you a, a visual clue um, as to what, which, uh, which, what course you're looking at. This- Hey Adela, you, can I ask you a stupid question? Certainly. Um, so how did those courses get into the dashboard? Were they, you know, slid well, in there by you guys from, well, from Banner with, Yes, it comes okay. from Banner. So once you sign in, if you're registered in a course as a student or as an instructor, your course is going to be either on your dashboard or for sure in this uh, all courses list um, if you have, have been favoriting your courses. So it's just like in Blackboard, once you sign up for something, uh, it's, it's in your list. Um, also, when you change the colors of, uh, of your tiles, it just affects your page. So it's just a visual cue for you. Everyone's dashboard is going to be unique to them. So, um, so I uh, really like that about um, Canvas. Um, how do you write, it, Adela? How do you write in, uh, let's say, the course title on that uh, colored uh, frame? So um, uh, there's a space here called nickname. So if you wanted to change the name, you can just give it another name in this nickname box, and. Um, So see, I changed it from Growing with Canvas to Main Course. And once again, that's only for you. It's your students are still going to see, 
you know, that they have the option of nicknaming their courses as well. Otherwise, the name of your course cannot change. Okay. Uh, be, you know, because things that come in from Banner um, are, that's just, they just have to be that way. And even if you did change something, uh, Banner communicates with Canvas four times a day. So um, the next time uh, Canvas gets a file from Banner, it's going to put it back to how it, the name of your course to how it was. So does anyone have questions about their dashboard? Uh, how can you put up photographs? <clears throat> photographs? Yeah, like um, our graphics. Let me say that, graphics. And on your dashboard? <clears throat> yeah, well, on the course. Well, that uh, these pictures are in course settings. That's where you would add it. Course settings. Yeah, so you would, it would be in the individual course. Can you show me where um, that is? That, like, okay. like Brittany had a really uh, pretty sophisticated dashboard with photographs from all the classes that she was teaching. Right, so that, that just means that she had favorited her classes in a certain order on her dashboard. Uh -huh. so, so she she did not change the picture that's on the tile. Oh, this is all right. the, the tile that, that is uh, she put in her course. Oh really. Thank you. You're welcome. So um let's see. Oops. There's another <coughs> at the very top right of the dashboard window, there's another snowman with some other options. Um, right now we're in the card view. If you went to the list view, that just, that gives you this very, um, I don't know of anyone that, that uses this. But I guess, I don't, I don't know what kind of, if you're OCD or what, that you would like this view. I, it's just confused, it's confusing to me. Adela, <coughs> yes. Those three dots are called a snowman. Well, they're. We've decided to here at UIW we're calling them a snowman. Some oh, people oh. call them blueberries. Some people call them a kebab, and some people just call them a vertical ellipse. But I think we've sort of casually at UIW agreed to call them a snowman. Uh, I learned something new. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, here in recent activity, what that does, I guess, um, recent activity and list view, this is just if you're going to check what's, what's on your to-do list for, for that day. Uh, I have never, I, it might be very useful to some people, but card view, that's all I need so that I can click into whatever course I'm, I need to see. So that's your dashboard and courses. I'm going to go into my account now and go over. Uh, Terry will talk about um, your profile and notifications. Take it away, Terry. OK. Good after Good morning, everybody. How are you? How's good everybody? Good morning, Thanks. Terry. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So um, basically, again, we're back here on our, we're back in our course. You know, this, uh, as we started before, we were on the dashboard. Now we're going to go in and talk about uh, the profile and, not and, and notifications. So as you can see, you may or may not have a picture up here. Um, uh, you're gonna you're gonna see a, it's the top button right under the UIW Cardinal, and it's it'll be account. It may or may not be a picture in there. So if you like, you can say minimize your screen a little bit and bring up a Canvas course, and you can click on this if you want to. 
And this allows me to be able to uh, look at some of the things with my account. Now, these are account-wide settings or what we call global settings. So these settings are going to basically affect all of the courses that you're teaching. So if you're, you know, so uh, for example, if you change your profile picture, which we'll do first, when you, uh, or if you change your notifications, these notifications are changed for all of your courses. Um, so we'll start out with notifications. And there are three kinds of notifications that you have. You have uh, notifications by uh, email, SMS, uh, and if you have a second email uh, that you put in, we'll talk about that in just a second, uh, you can be notified in your second email, and then what's called push notifications. Where they just notify, where uh, notifications are pushed out to your um, favorite uh, mode of communication. And when you're in this mode, there are three ways that you can be notified. Um, there's a daily summary, uh, which is looks like a page of a calendar, a weekly summary, and a notify immediately. In other words. For example, if you send out an announcement in your course, it will notify you that you sent out an announcement in your course. Now, this is for you only. This is not, these uh, notification settings will not affect your students. Um, so I, uh, again, I wanna emphasize that. So if you're setting these notification settings, thinking your student's gonna get an email when something happens, you'll have to actually direct the students to make these changes themselves. Um, and um, so again, you're, again, this is just globally for your account. Um, um, so the, again, the due date, you can do a daily summary. Um, I can also do a, um, and I'm just clicking on the, that daily summary icon. Notify immediately daily summary or weekly summary, or I can just turn the notification off uh, if I don't want to have anything to do with that. Um, so these are all basic course activities. It goes on through discussions, um, scheduling, groups, uh, just any kinds of alerts that you can have. There's not a lot of these I changed. Um, in fact, I think about the only thing I did was uh, I changed the announcement one. And, um, and uh, so there's not really a lot that you might or may or may not want to change. Um, the SMS, so this will text you. So if you want to say, get a text announcement, a kind of an interesting thing about these is that either it turns it off or you give your choice is notify immediately. Um, so those are your, uh, those are the only choices that you have there. And then we'll talk about it a little bit. You can actually add a secondary email that you'll notify as well. So if you're, uh, you know, so all your email through your course, uh, your official email is your UIW email account, but you can also bring in your personal email account. And we'll so I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, Okay. Terry, I have a quick question about this notification. Yes. Uh, not, not as a faculty, but for students. I realized that uh, when I, at the beginning of the semester, when I post an announcement saying that our class is going to start this day at that time, the students don't get uh, email from the Canvas. Correct. So is there a way to change that setting? That setting has to be changed by the student. Wow. It, it takes some time to get in contact with the students that way. Correct. But I, I mean, the, 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 the changes, these are, these, are, these are what they call account level settings and they're set, changed for, for, all, for all of your courses. Okay. Okay, and but you can't. The changes that you make 
can't be um, uh, the changes that you make um, only affect you. They don't affect your students. I, I, when I, one of the things that you can do, and I actually have um, a, uh, let me go ahead and go into the chat here. And I'm gonna put in a couple of uh, websites that can give you a little bit more information regarding the uh, notifications and the types of notifications. And you can include these with your students and even in, you know, and talk to and, and, and uh, say in an initial email, notify the students that, that these are the, um, um, that these are some of the other things that you'll want them to change. Uh, hey, Terry, so can I ask there. you a question right now? I I'm thought sorry? I was following. I thought I was following you until you said that you could notify them in an initial email. Is my understanding that the, I can't send them emails through Canvas until they turn on the notification to receive an email? No, that is not correct. Okay, then the, explain the notifications again. will be sent to them but you can't change the notification settings. If you email the students in Canvas, it'll email, the, you'll, you'll email the students. Okay, so what's the difference between a notification and an email? Okay, so a notification, it will notify them when something has a, occurred in their course. For example, uh, hold on just a second. Let's say I posted an assignment. Correct, okay. So if you have this globally set um, to, uh, to send them an email when they do date, uh, a daily summary um, of uh, due dates. So when they have something due, they will be notified of that by their email. If they, if they accept that setting. Now, most of these settings, they don't have to change. They, they will be set by default. So in other words, uh, if a student decides that they don't want an announcement change, they can turn that notification off. But by default, this is sent as, uh, it's either a daily, it's either an immediate or a daily, uh, a daily summary. So but they do okay. receive, or they, that this should by probably a set immediate uh, for the students. Okay, so if I send my students an email before class, it sort of sounds like that's what uh, Suleiman does. I send them an email before class about something to do for the first day or something. They will get that email. Yes, yes. Thank you. That email comes, the, anything that you send through email, the notification just sends additional information to them, and, but they have control of the settings. Uh, then the question is, uh, I send the email through the inbox feature of the uh, uh, Canvas, or how can I send email to the students? Before you send they... email, like, just like you would in Blackboard, you send you through the inbox feature of Canvas. Okay. The notifications, as I said, when something, the notification is when something happens in the course, the student is notified of it. And these are the different notifications that they can receive. And they can and and they can either turn these on or turn these off. But this is going to be for all of the courses. This is as I said, it's it's called global. So if a student is enrolled in six courses, they can set these settings for all six courses in one right here. Thanks, Terry. Terry, can I ask one more question? When you uh, the announcement had the. Um, you can do reply, you can uh, have a comment. Do the students get that? Because I was trying to use that uh, to, to um, add information to an announcement and they would not receive a notification from that. Do you have to click a particular thing for that to be um, um, available or turn on? Or just announcements will do it? I don't know what they were not getting it, but they were not getting it. Um. But again, I don't, uh, the default setting is that they receive notifications of announcements. So when an announcement goes out, they, they should not only get the announcement, but they also get an email of the announcement. 
it the harvester on like that to receive the notification and you said that it was by default right yes by default it's set up that they'll be notified okay thank you um and then the um profile is the next part of this and this is where we get to have a little maybe maybe get to have a little fun uh, first thing you'll have is your profile picture, and if you mouse over it, you'll see a pencil, and you just click the pencil. Uh, so you can upload a picture from your personal library of pictures. Um, you can take a picture with your camera. Or um, you can, uh, there's a something called Gravatar. I'm not really sure what it is, but it ends up being a symbol. And then once you uh, choose a picture, um, again, you, and then you, or you can choose a picture from, from any place and then position it and click save and that's your avatar picture. So if you're in Canvas and you're uh, click profile and you can access a picture, why don't you take a second to add your, uh, your photo to this. Everybody's looking really dil diligent, so I assume you've got some profile pictures uploaded. Everybody got some? Everybody found, uh, found a picture to uh, upload? The bottom of your screen is a little reactions button. If you'll just give me a thumbs up, then we can go on to the next. Thanks. Terry, can you edit your name? Yes, you can. I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. Sure. Well, no. It's fine. I'm sorry, Mary Martha. What was your question? Uh, yeah, I was talking to Liz. Uh, sorry. I, I'm not doing the profile picture right now. Okay, so come over to the right side of the screen and there's a snowman. Click on the snowman and click edit profile. And then you can now add, edit your profile. Um, so you can add say a biography. Adela says canvas superhero is a little bit is, is I'm stretching it. So I'm gonna change uh, my biography here. So we'll just change that bit of information. And then I can add a real brief, um, a real brief biography. Also any links, uh, like if I have a LinkedIn page, I can put the link uh, to my LinkedIn page here, just type in the title and the URL. And once you've kind of done all of that, you can click save profile and it will save that for you. I'll give everybody a minute to put some information in their profile. 
When you're ready, just give me a thumbs up. Is there a way to edit name because mine is not spelled right? Yeah, we'll do that in just a second. Cool. That's our next. That's our next uh, item. So we'll go back to the snowman and click account details this time. And uh, you have your all now, so you can see there's some additional details on the account. And uh, I'm going to come back here to my profile. And click on settings. And then from settings, then I can um, add, uh, if I want to add an additional email address, I just click plus email address. And or if I want to have, say, uh, I can be texted, um, I can do that as well. Okay, and let's see. Now, as far as doing the names and, uh, and information over here, I'm in my settings and below, below um, where I have ways to contact, where I added my address, there's a button that says edit settings. And in here, um, I can, uh, again, change things like my default email time zone, uh, pronouns, and uh, update my settings. Hold on. Okay, so on my profile on the uh, button here where I can edit my profile on my snowman, um, uh, again, I can go back to account details and right here where it's got name, email and all that information, there is a small little button that says edit. And then that's where you can change your display name.
Could you do the replay about how to get there again, please? Yeah, Terry, where is that? Nope. Okay. So, okay. So we're going to back. So to get there, let me make sure that there's not a button on the bottom. Most of this changes instantaneously as you make the correction. So again, you'll be in the profile. And then from profile, click the um, snowman. And then account details. And then way over here on the bottom left, you'll see a very small edit button. <laughs> and that's what you click. Terry, I don't see a snowman on my profile. Indeed, me either, nor an account settings button. Me either. You don't, you don't see this button right here? No. no. It just says edit. That's it. There's a pencil and edit. Uh, yeah, it just says edit that profile. That, that snowman. Uh, okay. <clears throat> And then you just get this window when you click edit profile? Yes. Okay. I am going to say that the reason that the, the setting is different on mine is because I have an admin status and I didn't realize that it was, that it was different. Um, Adela, am I making, um, Adela, you still over there? Yes, thank you. So, um, so, um, Nobody has that button that I have. Right, uh, I, have I know because I'm an admin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just for admins. And the reason that we did that is because um, there's one checkbox and it would allow everyone to change their name to anything. And we decided that wasn't a good idea. So I just posted a link in the chat box. It's a form if you want me to add... Um, uh, doctor or something to your name, I can I can do that as an administrator. So you can just fill out that form, tell me what you want it to say, and uh, send it to me. But um, you know, don't be too adorable with your with your name, and and we won't be doing it for students. Sorry. <coughs> Okay, so I apologize. I I didn't realize that it was different since I'm an admin. Uh, so I'm I, unfortunately I uh, uh, can't change any of that information uh, that's in um, as far as my name is concerned. But again, in the settings, if I uh, right under files, I've got the settings button. I can do add email addresses and things like that. Uh, one other men thing I wanted to mention is this area called files. And the reason I wanted to mention that is because um, this is all of the files and all of the courses that you have uh, uploaded to Canvas. And um, it's the big important thing I wanted to mention to you is if you ever update any files, you want to keep the file naming as simple as possible. So for example, if you make a change in your course outline from spring of 2020 uh, to spring of 2021, and generally what people do is they just rename the file spring of 2021 from spring of 2020. But you want to keep that as simple as possible. So you'd say you would probably just want to call it course outline and then update it and leave the same name. And the reason is, is that whenever it copies, whenever you copy a course, um, all of the information gets copied and it replaces the file that was existing. And then if you change out and add a file to it, um, that file uh, need, name needs to say the same or the link that you have to that file, for example, if you have a link to that file in your, uh, uh, in your course somewhere will break and you won't, and the student won't be able to get to that file. 
So the naming procedure, you need to keep your naming as simple as possible and consistent throughout the course. And you can, again, you can access your files then by actually going to the course. And when you open the course, all your files are listed here. Are there any questions? Hey, Terry. Yes. Um, under profile, you know, I have my picture, my name, con contact. There, it says no registered services. Where do you put your email up here for, for the students to see? Um, it's in that. Um, Go in settings. It's in the settings. Well, I've been through the settings and it says email, but it doesn't transfer back to the profile page because the ways to contact email address has that. Is there something I'm supposed to do with that? No, I think uh, 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 as long as you have an email here, mm -hmm. everybody, people can contact you through it. Okay. It's, it's kind of that way in Blackboard too. It doesn't show you the, everybody's email, just their name. But if you wanted to put something right where they could see it, will they be able to see my profile? Well. Yes. Then you can put it in the profile itself. How? <laughs> when you edit the profile. <laughs> okay. So when I'm in here in my, when I'm going into, when I'm in profile and I edit my profile, Oh, you type it in under your, mm -hmm. your biography. Okay. And maybe don't forget to hit the save button, generally at the right bottom. Yes, always click save profile. Very good. Thank you very much. Singleman, I appreciate that. I missed a lot of <laughs> unsafe <laughs> editing with, because I didn't hit the save. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? I noticed that it said under files, that uh what is it 52.4 megs is that how much space we have allocated across every class um no it's uh it's a total well i'm sorry what is the hold on i'm i'm can you show me what you're looking at and then i can it's when you were in files when you're showing the files See at the bottom, it says 25% of. Um, that's for the, that was for the, the course uh, that I was using. So I think what your, um, we, your, your, your limit is two gigabytes. For a course, but for your. For a course. Um, so, and it's two megabytes, per, two gigabytes, I'm sorry, two gigabytes per course. Cool, thank you, because in my class, they're uploading lots of files, and I thought, oh, good God, if we're limited to 52 megs across all of my classes with all the stuff they upload, we got a problem. No. Uh, now, your student uploads, Adela, correct me if I'm wrong, anything the, stu the student uploads does not affect your course upload. Right. You, know, so you have right. a two gigabyte limit in the course, but if your students are uploading two gigabytes per student, that's not an issue. Yeah, that doesn't count. Anybody else, any questions? Are they were able to get a nice profile picture up. Anybody want to share their profile picture? <laughs> Teresa, don't roll your eyes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. I mean, you, you probably didn't think you, I'm amazed we did this. It took 45 minutes to, to, to do this presentation. It's actually pretty simple.
but it's a great start um, to, um, to kind of getting to know Canvas. Um, as I said, there's a couple of links I just sent to you and Adela has a link. I do want to point out also um, that we do have a web page and this web page is chock full of Canvas information. And I am posting that down here in the uh, in our chat and um, and so you'll be able to get that. Adela, do you have the link for our YouTube page handy? Yeah, I just posted it. And then yeah. so our YouTube page is in there as well where there'll be videos and all of these um, all of these sessions are recorded and they'll be posted to that as well. So thank you for attending the first edition. And if you want to come back, we're doing this tomorrow at what time? Adela? Two. Two and then next Wednesday at 10 and the Thursday, next Thursday at two. Terry, do you have any um of those links we can give to the students if they want to change any of the settings. So just give this some more guidelines that me just writing down an email. I'm asking, I don't know. Do they have any of that support? Yeah, I actually just sent you two uh, links from Canvas that describe what all of the links do, mm -hmm. uh, all of the settings, uh, uh, all of the notification settings do, and one that's kind of uh, has, um, uh, how do I set and how to as well. So I just, those are the first two links I sent uh, at 1021. If you wanna pull those up, you can get those out of the chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you wanna, uh, if you want to um, save this chat and get those links, if you, in your chat in the bottom right corner, there is a button that says uh, the, your, there's an uh, a snowman that fell on his side. <laughs> uh, there's an ellipsis, and if you click the ellipsis, you can save the chat, and it'll save it in your Zoom folder on your desk, in your documents <coughs> on your computer. So. Okay. I have a question that's not completely related to this. I was told that if that you all were going to be moving courses from last spring and last fall into Canvas for us, but I would need to ask special permission or ask you to do anything for the spring of this year. Is that accurate information? Yes. So I, I uh, just this minute got a request. Was it from you? No, I, I, I just typed a message in. The... Yeah, because our contract with Blackboard is over May 31st, and that's the cop date. So if you want anything from this spring semester, we'll have to do it individually, you know, sometime between May 1st and May 31st, just because Blackboard takes a month to do something like that. Okay. So we, we can't, we're not going to uh, ex export this spring semester's courses we're going to use last spring semester's courses unless you make a request oh okay thank you yeah. I'll, I'll be contacting you all right <laughs> okay last call for questions thanks terry thanks adela you're welcome thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.